This story starts with Donovan, who owns A1 Vacuum and Sewing Machine in Lauder Hill. He is my go-to expert on these things as well as air filters. I live in a beautiful place in the Everglades, surrounded by nature. However, I'm in a flight path, hence compromised air quality, and I have purchased several large air filters from Donovan. So I called him to ask him if there was such a thing as a tiny little air filter that I could put in my mask, that maybe even battery power to clean the air. And he said he didn't know about that, but he did know of a retired nurse who's making some really unusual masks out of fleece, which happens to be a moisture barrier. And I've had a great conversation with her and learned a lot. Details following. I'm here with Sharon, and she makes some, some amazing masks with fleece, and she's going to tell us all about them. They seem a lot safer than what's out there right now. Sharon? It, thank you, uh, Stephanie, for inviting me. It's something I'm really passionate about. I've done a lot of research into the masks, and that's why I am making masks myself, and that's why I'm making them out of fleece. These are the type of masks that I'm having my family wear and myself wear because I think that they're most protective. Um, the why thing about think, masks, okay, I'm sorry, I was going to ask you, why are you making them out of fleece? Why do you feel that's more protection? Uh, because of the fact that the material is water resistant, water repellent, moisture repellent in general, and that it's not a woven fabric. When you use a woven fabric, um, everywhere the two threads come together, you are leaving a little tiny opening uh, for particles to get into. So uh -huh. in that regard, the fabric is, is much more uh, protective. Um, cotton is absorbent which means that any kind of moisture that is in the air or otherwise can be absorbed by cotton. Um, Does that mean it, it will stay in the cotton? So the cotton acts more as a trap, right? Yeah, but, yeah but it, that's very it scary. Yeah, but it, but it doesn't, it doesn't, actually doesn't, it doesn't really. Um, you don't need it, it, I just do. Wait, oh, there you go. I'm so challenged. That's okay. No, but because but because it absorbs, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, unless you have a barrier behind the cotton, that absorption it goes all the way through the material to your skin. Um, as you well know, that in that is the whole reason we wear cotton so comfortably is that oh my god, it absorbs, it absorbs the 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 moisture from your skin and it, it wicks through to the other side and then it evaporates. Well, but it does the same thing in, in, in the opposite direction as well. It, it, it's breathable in both directions. So uh -huh. things move through cotton very easily. Um, moisture moves through cotton very easily. So I don't like cotton for that, that reason. That um, makes a lot of sense. But, but let me say this. Uh, any mask is better than no mask. I would even a scarf, that, even a scarf, anything. Anything, that covers, anything that covers your nose and your mouth uh, completely is better than no mask. Um, the oh, mask, uh -huh. the mask that we have, any mask that you wear, protects the world from you. The but okay. to protect you from the world is a completely different challenge. Well, that's very concerning to me. It well, really is. I, I don't want I don't want to openly concern people, but <laughs> As if we didn't have it, enough. It, 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 is, it is the fact that if you are going to wear a mask to protect mm -hmm. you, then the less amount of or particles that get through to you, the better. All right. That All is right. So you're minimizing. You yes. Um, okay. That is why they say that even and the best material. It does not matter if uh -huh. you are using the most impermeable material. 
right? If you have a gap or if you have a way in which air can go, get into that material on either on the out from the sides, from mm -hmm. the top, from the bottom, right? Then you are pretty much fit is is a major, major issue. Yes, and I see mask. people's masks are bulging out the side. It's not even tight to their face. How can it stop anything? It does not stop anything. That's just yeah. it, 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 it protects it protects uh, the world from them. It does not protect them from the world at all. Um, even medical personnel will tell you, right, that if mm -hmm. you have a, a N95 respirator mask that is ill-fitting, you have done the same thing as if you had a mask on or if you had a HEPA mask on wow. or if you have a fleece mask on or if you have any mask, any kind of mask other than, you know, even if it's an N95, if it does not fit you well, then you have defeated the purpose of protecting you. Okay. You, so you're doing very well to protect the world, but you have not protected yourself. So, it may give you peace of mind, but you have not protected yourself. One of the things you mentioned to me when we spoke last week was how comfortable the fleece is and you can breathe in and out of it easily. But don't, do you think it's necessary to add a piece of HEPA filter, like a piece of one of Donovan's vacuum cleaner bags to filter more out? Do you think it's best? I guess in the best of all possible worlds, you'd have both. But in do you think best, how necessary is it? In the best possible world, you'd have both. Um, even that, unless it is fitted to you, the, the whole point is that it the has fit. to be fitted well. The fit, is, the fit is primal. And that is why I have tried my best to design and get the best fit fit that I possibly can. Now, the fit uh -huh. may not be as comfortable as a lot of people would like it to be. Please There's nothing hot. comfortable about a mask, period. It's hot. I can't breathe in it. I feel exactly. so claustrophobic. I had no idea. And I was like, yes. I was like, I put it on open packages because I don't go out. I'm like a real mm -hmm. stay-at-home person for this. And I, was, I said, I better put my packages outside. What if there's some microbes on the packages? Who knows? Yes, that, that is, they say that is possible. Like, ah! I have kind of a science fiction mentality, which is kind of the way the world feels lately for a lot of reasons. But this is, um, this was just such good data for me. Now, um, I don't really know much about fleece. I know I ski a little bit and it's used in, um, there's something called a neck warmer and you pull it up over your face when you're skiing because it's yes. like it's snowing in your face. And I thought, well, people would use their neck warmers if they have them. But I think most yes. of them are not natural fleece. And don't you think you should use natural fleece rather than polyester? Um, if you could get it. <laughs> but right. again, well, no, like a right. lot of things cotton, you it's cotton. Of things. Yeah. Again, a lot of things you, you can't you can't get now. Um, right, that's true. So point. pretty much you need to kind of use what you have. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, um, if you can get a fleece mask, yes. If you can get a mask that fits really well over your entire face and uh, snuggly against your, your, under your cheekbone, you know, and snuggly against your, all the way back to your ear. Um, that is what I personally recommend. So um, it sounds and, like fit and, is and, and number and one. And under, and, yeah, and under your chin. Under okay. your chin, uh, against your, almost directly against your eye, you know, against your cheekbone and, and back. That whole area needs to be encapsulated if you can. Um, right. Okay. I... I watched, I watched a doctor um, attempt to make her own mask and her, and she found having the material from the hospital, she uh -huh. made a medical grade mask, but she, she tested it. And what she tested was that 
it was the fit. It wasn't so much the material. She had the material that she needed that she thought would make a very, very protective mask. But the fit was her main concern because okay. even with the, the N95s that they have, which they sometimes run out of, unless the fit is adequate, then they have a problem. Okay. And they, and they know it. And they, this, is how, this is how they get exposed. Because otherwise, why would we be hearing of doctors and nurses and orderlies and people being exposed? We are trained. I'm a, I'm a retired nurse. Uh, 30 years ICU. So I, I have worn those masks. And why would you be hearing of them if they are, unless they're breaching protocol someplace? They know okay. how serious it is. They yes. are not. They are not breaking protocol. And they, they don't have only, fresh. They don't have fresh gear either. They're they're uh, having to wear things more than once. And that you you yeah. didn't have that, right? You had everything no. fresh. No, they, you have you. You're supposed to have everything fresh. Those masks are meant to be taken off and thrown away because the outside of that mask is contaminated, oh. right? And they know that the outside of that mask is contaminated. And how can um, they even touch it? They can't even touch it. They have to touch, they have to take it off, take their gloves off and sterilize everything. Exactly. So you, so you throw it in like a bath? How do you do that? What's the best way to they, sterilize? They, Maybe that, you could tell they, me that. I'm not they, sure. They, they can't sterilize them. They're meant to be thrown away. They are now, that, that is why they are going through so many. Oh they are yes. hoping to come up with a way of sterilizing them. They have, they have two, I think there's only three in the country, um, chambers in which they have figured out how to, they, where they can hang the used mask and, ster and sterilize them in that. That is not available to everybody. Wow. Because the fact is that you're supposed to wear them and they were made to be worn and disposed of. They were not made to be reused. No, they're having to reuse them. Um, so it is in that process where they're, they're getting c contaminated, is in yeah. trying to reuse them. Yeah. And or if they do not have the appropriate fit, that is the other time in which they would get that would, contaminated. It would be a breach. It would be a breach, and they would get it's the infection. Exactly. So it sounds like fit whether it's contaminated or not, are the two biggest issues. Yes. And then, it, then comes material. Yes. But I think for personal use, fleece is a wonderful solution. I, uh, I believe it is. Um, yeah. I read that it has antimicrobial um, effects, like the microbes yeah. don't pass through it, which is like yeah. perfect. Yeah. And, as you, and as you said, if you, if you, if you are doing that and social distancing, it means that you have a good level of protection. It's not the absolute best, but you have a good level of protection. And you're helping I, I flatten the curve. And we you're have helping to flatten, flatten the curve. That makes such a big difference. Really. Just wearing, wearing if you do not if you do not have access to a fleece mask, then Wear your cotton. Make sure that it is double thickness at least, right? Um, so it needs to be fairly thick when you when you wear your cotton, and make sure that it fits well. That so, is the what if it's bulging on the sides? What if it's one of these regular masks that people you see? How how do you get it to flatten? What do you do? I mean, I have no idea what to do. You tape it? Maybe. Uh, Yes, you can. You can tape it, but then again, you have That's to. Not gonna, you can't really tape your face, though. I guess <laughs> you can't continually tape tape it and put it back and off because eventually, what it will do, it will break the skin. What uh, about so putting you, a bandana over it? That'll help hold it down. Um, that's a scarf. The, you can tie a whole, scarf over it. Be yeah. Very fashionable. Yeah, the but actually, that, that was the whole reason I made my fleece masks because they do fit snugly against the face and you can wear your regular if you want to reuse your regular mask because okay. 
you want to keep that's the other thing when you have these little these little surgical masks that bulge at the side yeah they are one they're one time use masks you can't wash them they're not supposed to be washed now they say they say you can wash them gently but understand when you are washing them they have been severely if if you've been in an area where you think that you have you have to you you've come into contact with covid right you right. have actually contaminated the outside of that mask right your it's whole, and all, yes and all your clothes and, and all your clothes but but especially yeah. the outside of the side of that mask because that's what you're breathing in to you you when you take in a breath there's some there's some force that actually pulls stuff towards you on your clothes it's only what drops you know from the air but you literally pull the air in and through when you breathe in Huh? You're not, I just got a not, strong not, visual of that. It's, it's, <laughs> Sharon, it's thank not, you. Yes. It's, it's yeah, people passive. cannot go out without masks. Not anymore. Yeah, not not, not, not right now. It's just, it's not yeah, rocket it's, science. It's not a passive movement. Breathing is not passive. Exactly. Passive and there's, thing. yes. So, so the thing is, if what I suggested to like Donovan, he had a filtered mask but like he said when he went home each day he needed to dispose of it and he didn't know how many he was going to be able to oh keep. yeah right? and i said to him to make those last you longer to decrease the amount of contamination that you have on your filter put a fit put a a uh, fleece oh. mask over it. it it does not allow any air like that to, wow that's contaminated to get oh. into it no, at least at least no it cuts down the on the amount of moist air going into the mask so, so would you recommend if you did that and would you would re would you reuse the mask over the fleece mask that you would wash every night right like donovan said oh, he yeah. washes it every night by hand and it yeah. dries by morning and and yeah. that and, and, yeah. and the, the nice thing about the fleece is you can you can throw it in your dryer which means uh -huh. you actually heat you apply heat sterilization to it so oh, you know you, you can put you it in the dryer on hot oh yeah like low you, right no no you can put it on you can, really I, I i i have i throw my my fleece mask in on in the dryer actually before i give my fleece after i've made them before i put them in 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 my package i literally throw them in the dryer oh that's awesome yeah i i i i i, I try and dry them before because even though uh i have no symptoms i take my temperature morning and night and you do? so forth. um yeah. and and i and i'm monitoring myself as well as if i'm Brilliant. having so, social isolation and you know distancing and all of that i still want to protect others as much as possible so after i make my mask before i give them out to anybody i throw them in the dryer so oh. that they have a dry cycle and they, and they get they get good and hot right uh -huh. so i'm saying okay i do not know because that information as far as i know it isn't out there at what degree heat you right. need to kill the covid but yeah heat kills viruses and bacteria in in general and True. since they are saying since they're basically saying that it is not transmitted in food mm -hmm. right at least not cooked food so th that they're telling people it's safe to eat cooked food right from restaurants and and so oh. on and so forth right therefore in the cooking process it that you have to assume that uh they're they're thinking that it's not being replicated onto food okay because are they saying people, not to eat salad and fresh fruit no they're not, they haven't they mentioned have to wash anything it yeah food. good yeah but they haven't mentioned anything about about tra any transmission due to food but so better you can I, kill viruses and microbes and cooking yeah yeah you yeah. could but because microbes are in are, are used to be killed in the heat so therefore if you put if I would think if you put it in the dryer, right, and you're running a 20-minute cycle, 
it's getting pretty hot in there. That should be yeah. enough to kill most viruses and bacteria. A good of sanitizer them. to send it out. Exactly. Because well, you, th that's, what they're that's what they're recommending with your clothes. If you wash your clothes and you put it in the dryer and you, and you put it back on, then you know, you're good to go. This yes. Is, this is what they're saying when you go outside. So, you know, if they're not telling you to, oh, well, you need to come in and burn your clothes, then. <laughs> you have to. Exactly. Yeah. When I go out, I wash my clothes right away when I come back. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that is, that is the whole thing. But that's just it. You, you can do the same with a washable mask. You can't necessarily do that with a a filtered mask. They because they they, they right. pretty much break down, break down pretty quickly if you if you do that. But but if you're protecting them, then and needing to reuse them, they're at least a lot cleaner than they than than what you would be be. Reusing. It makes sense. It makes sense better than reusing paper masks and things like that. If you can do it, yeah. Um, Thank you so much. Said, what, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, not at all. Um, my other pet peeve. <laughs> what? Is is people who wear gloves. What? I wear gloves. Do not wear gloves. Why? No. no. I throw them out or I wash no. them. Really? No. No. I don't go I'm out, so it's really kind of moot. I seriously, I haven't been out of my house in two weeks, but. Yes. I but wore gloves when I went to Publix and then then Whole Foods. No, yes, I did. No, 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 because it, as as a healthcare professional, you learn not to wear gloves in the hospital unless you are going into a highly contaminated area. Why? Because you are more likely to contaminate yourself and what? other surfaces other place is when you think that your hands are covered therefore you do not wash them you do not keep them clean you do not keep them from being contam contam contaminated and you also don't keep them off your you don't keep them off your face it's it's a psychological thing so oh. you actually will spread more more contaminants right really not just go well, just in general, this is this is this is this is what in general. This is not even COVID nineteen. You will spend more contaminants by having um, gloves on. What you do is you decide that oh well, my hands are protected. Your head says your hands are protected, so <laughs> you will go ahead and you will pick up a pencil, right? With my hands. Which are now yeah. contaminated because they're in the gloves, which are contaminated. So you're saying no, I walk around no, with my contaminated glove, or when I take them off? Yeah. No. I, the thing is, what, what <laughs> happens because your glove, because ah. before, right, you had your glove on, you touched something else that was contaminated. You will pick up several more things without washing your hands, and contaminate everything you touch because you have on a glove it I'm does not big matter trouble. i'm gonna die i wear gloves well i'm an artist and i wear gloves because the camel the paints get my hands so dry when i have to use like strong chemicals to like, wash them off so i wear gloves no 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 but then i wash my hands the gloves feel a little weird when you take them off i always wash my hands when i take my gloves off there is that you must wash your hands <laughs> and no if, if you no see I'm that's, plagued that's with dry skin. I just can't. My hands can get so dry. It drives me insane. No, that's you why. Wear, wear gloves to do for chemicals. Exactly. Or yes. if you are getting your hands contaminated, but as soon as you finish using it for that specific purpose, you remove the glove and you need to know how to remove the glove without contaminating yourself. Inside out and you and you dispose of them appropriately so that you don't contaminate everything else, right? Well, that I have to admit something to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would dispose of my gloves every time I use them. Every time I finish painting, I put them, throw them out, whatever. But now, because they're scarce, I've been washing them and keeping them. So that's, but I, I have them in separate areas. Like I have my painting gloves are here. 
my kitchen gloves are there, my cleaning gloves are somewhere else. So I don't like mixed purposes. I'm kind of anal about that stuff. That that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but it's not per life isn't perfect anymore, Sharon, is it? <laughs> if you wash if you wash your gloves, right? Uh, like you do your hands. Uh -huh. Pretend when you have gloves on, you need to pretend that they are your hands. You need to keep them as clean as your hands. Okay, right? I'm there. I'm totally on the same page. I'm on the same page. Absolutely. I have outside gloves as well because I have pesky critters that bother me, ducks and geese, and I have to go take care of stuff. So I don't, I actually throw those gloves out, but I don't ever, I even change my clothes when I come inside from that. <laughs> yeah, but that's, but that's just the thing. Those are the, the purposes that you use gloves for. The problem is that if you take a pair of gloves and you go to Publix, right, and then you do not, and you don't disinfect the handlebar, right, that you're holding on to. It's everything. Right? It's everything. Because you, you, haven't, you haven't disinfected, right? Mm -hmm. But you hold on to it with your gloves and you say, you think to yourself, you're safe. No. What you've done is you have just contaminated you've just contaminated those gloves and everything you pick up, you have now untouched, you have now transferred whatever was on that handlebar to every single item you touch in the supermarket. To every single surface you touch in the supermarket. Right? It's you have endless. just transferred that. Right? So if it would be better if you had no gloves on and then Say you don't have you you don't have um, hand sanitizer with you. You should have a wipe something like that. wipe it off. If you have gloves on, you should also have like a Clorox wipe with you so that For you the can gloves. wipe the I love that. I can add that to my repertoire. That's a that's a good one. I like that. And bar with your gloves, so therefore, and then dispose of the what you wiped off appropriately. You do I not love it. because then you're not contaminating somebody else or some other surface that you may not realize it could get back to you. So wipe off your handbar, therefore, with your gloves, right? And then so that the chemical doesn't get on there, then that's clean, and then your hands are still clean. Your gloves basically treat your gloves like your hands. Your hands are still clean. The handlebar is still clean. Everything is clean. You well, that validates my gloves. I wish I could certainly work in. I'm sorry. You're going to pick up your You're going to put them on. Then when you get them home, right, once, once you leave the supermarket, you are going to take your gloves off. If you're going to keep them, you need to wash them like you would your hands. Right. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, I've been minutes. like spraying them. Do you think vinegar is strong enough to spray them with, or should I use? I don't, bleach seems to eat them up. Vinegar and water is that strong enough, or no? And soap. There is, there is nothing like plain old soap and water. Soap and water will get it off your hand if used appropriately. Just the same, the same twenty seconds it wash. Treat your gloves like they are your hands. I love that. That's my new mantra. <laughs> that way you don't contaminate yourself, everybody else around you, which means you need, if you're going to wear gloves, you need to wash your hands frequently with True. the gloves on. <laughs> so That's basically you just need to wash your hands as frequently as you can, whether you have gloves on or not. Get a good fitting mask and do the best you can and don't go crazy over it. You just have to do the very best you can because you can make yourself nuts. It's not a yeah. long trip for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I try. Like with eating too, you know, you do the best you can. You can't go crazy. It's more stressful to like worry about something you can't control than to just use the best of what's available to you at the moment. I think that's the best thing to do. Don't you? I, I agree with you um get the best fit you can even if it's a little bit more uncomfortable try and get the best fit the, the, the closest fitting thing you can on your face around your face whatever you're using make it a close fit it needs to be fairly tight 
it may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it needs to be secure. I think so, tying a scarf over it's a good idea too, as an extra layer, and to hold help hold it in place if it's not perfect. Because not, I mean, I saw the way Donovan's mask fit. I never saw a mask fit like that. I'm gonna probably post a picture of Donovan in his mask with this video because it was that's what made me call you. I'm like, oh my god, I have to find out where. How did someone do it? It's perfect. I was so impressed. <laughs> so that takes a certain skill. I don't actually have that skill. So I'll do the best I can. So it's going to mean probably tying a scarf. <laughs> but actually, my neighbors are making masks. They have a drapery company. And they've started okay. making masks. And they make beautiful masks. And um, they're using cotton. And they're putting a layer of Tyvek in. So people are doing some amazing, innovative things. But I love, I love the fact that you were using fleece. I just think that material is amazing. And you gave so many good tips about how to stay healthier. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Oh. This was really fun. Well, it was good talking to you. And as I said, everybody needs to stay safe and healthy and try and protect each other. Exactly. And, and um, you know, at all times, you know, it's that's the best thing you can do is just follow the guidelines and, and we'll all get through this. Exactly. Thank you so much.